Hello, everybody. This is Andrea Marini. I am the head developer of the Yambo code. Um, I started developing Yambo 20 years ago for my PhD. And uh, in this lecture, I would like to introduce you to the philosophy behind the code. Actually, it's a general philosophy that uh, holds for any kind of calculation in material science. So this is not restricted just to uh, the Yambo code. So let me share my screen. Okay, what is a philosophy? A philosophy is just a procedure, a conceptual procedure that goes from the physical phenomenon you want to describe to the final result that you want to publish. Of course, you want to be accurate, accurate and actually uh, computationally cheap. You don't want, of course, to require a huge computer to do any of your calculations. So how does it work? The idea is actually to master the code in such a way to disclose the mystery behind the physical phenomena. Now, you have to consider Yambo as a very advanced screwdriver. I think it's a screwdriver is a perfect example. So with a screwdriver, you can do lots of things and actually you can also hurt yourself if you don't know how to use it. But remember, Yambo is just a tool, as a, like a screwdriver. There are many codes like Yambo, you can pick up the one you prefer. So what really matters is your ability to use the screwdriver, not the screwdriver itself. Of course, more advanced is the tool, more things you can do, but without your ability, the tool is completely useless. What does it mean in practice then to master Yambo and any other material science code? First of all, understand the level of complexity that are built in the code. Then study the theory that is behind the code that is used and actually it is used when you run the code itself and leads to the result. And then also learn how to manage the code itself, the tool through Anson tutorials that are actually part of this series of lectures. So um, you can think the word procedure as a stair with different steps. At the beginning, you have the phenomena. So what you want to describe, that can be uh, absorption, that can be, I don't know, levels, lifetimes, or whatever, you name it. Of course, you have to understand first whether the tool can describe that phenomena. Then you have to understand how this physical phenomena is connected to theory and how is this theory is practically implemented to lead finally to the results. These steps actually lead to uh, the properties of the entire procedure. Because when you have your phenomenal, phenomena and you want to connect it to a theory, you need some assumption. In the case of absorption, for example, you need to assume what is the kind of observable, microscopic observable that is connected to that, to that experiment. Another example is photomission. If you want to interpret the photomission spectra, in that case, you need to connect the current of ejected electrons to the internal levels of the system. So you need assumptions. Once you have assumptions, you connect your experiment to an observable. But then you need to write an equation governing the physics of this observable. So this is through uh, a discretization in such a way that this uh, theory will be understandable by computers. Then you need to do the numerical implementation and actual simulation. This in practice corresponds to the choice of several parameters that are consequence of the steps before discretization and assumptions. They lead to degrees of freedom in the form of parameters that you need to control and converge in order to get uh, meaningful results. All these steps actually are connected to the accuracy of your calculation and actually to the computational cost and applicability. So you have to answer the question, uh, is my number 
accurate enough to be published? Can I get an accurate enough number with a computational power I have? What is the computational cost? And more importantly, is what I'm doing applicable to the experimental result I want to interpret? First step, then how to do it in practice is to study. The first real first thing you have to do is to study the theory and the physics you are interested in. So if you want to calculate absorption of how much you have done, it's not enough to understand from the documentation of Yambo that Yambo can calculate absorption. Because for example, absorption is an object that depends on the direction. So you need to understand whether your system is isotropic and isotropic. This requires an understanding that cannot be provided by just running the code. So first step is to understand what you need to calculate. Then how? So once you have an observable, and let's take the, more, the most simple observable, the density. How, of course, if you, if you add a theory giving you the exact density, there will be no problem, but in practice, you don't have this theory. So you need to devise some approximation in order to calculate, to be able to calculate this density. But this means to apply theories like density functional theory, like many body within the linear response regime. All these theories actually embody some approximation that you need to understand in such a way to correctly evaluate the result of your calculation. Then, of course, the theory must be discretized. So you have to choose, for example, a certain number of frequencies or momenta in such a way that the equations governing your theory can be run in a computer. And then finally, you need to actually run it on, on the computer. So you need to answer several questions. Which method is good for my phenomenon? And then which theories and which parameters I have to choose to get a certain accuracy at a reasonable computational cost? So what you will learn in the tutorials and in the hands on provided on the Yambo web page, uh, you will understand how to choose these parameters how to understand the applicability and the accuracy of my results, and also to get an estimation of the computational costs. On the Yambo webpage, you will also find uh, lectures about like matter interaction, DFT in response, and many body perturbation theory. And few of them will be available also on our YouTube channel. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention in this very first and basic uh, Yamba lecture.